It's been a crazy day. Yeah, it's already clocked. Come on, Johnson, you got this! It's the, it's the worst I've seen. In the beginning, Bums on a Boat was born from a just bloody go for it philosophy. But since then, we've learned that this adventure and life itself is a marathon, not a sprint. Subscribe to join us on this adventure as we put ourselves to the test. Does slow and steady really win the race? These are the tales of Boab. Good morning. Buen dia. Thanks for joining the bums on a boat. Michael, what do we got today? We are polishing our fuel. So some friends of ours who we were house sitting for um, a couple weeks ago, they have a big badass pump filter fuel polishing kit and Blade is coming over to show us how to use that today. Joel isn't totally convinced that this is necessary. Are you Joel? No, I, I didn't say that. I think that it is necessary because we take, we're taking a new approach, which is preventative maintenance is really important instead of just waiting for things to go wrong and then trying to fix it then. Side note, we're walking past a house with a lot of dogs. And we've got Lola and some of the marina dogs with us, so everybody's going crazy. Hey guys, say hello. Say hi, Lola. Manina? Vic? Anybody? Shout out to the inventor of the FPM 160 fuel polishing module. Although the name sounds really complicated, it's actually a pretty simple machine. Okay. When Blades on this one. gets a second, I'll have him explain I it think to you. That, wait, no, actually, what we're because he's really smart. We'll, we'll got an inlet and an outlet, and it's pretty simple. It's got the little transfer pump right here, which is just a standard transfer pump as far as I know, and it's mounted onto the frame here, and that takes fuel up from the tank and cycles it through the Raycor filter housing here. So the Raycor filter inside is going to get all the particulates and things like that out. And of course, any of the water or heavier stuff is going to drain down into the bowl here. So it works just like your standard Raycor filter on a boat, but it has the transfer pump on it. And so we're going to get all the nasty fuel out of the tank. And then we're going to replace it into the tank once it's been polished. So the, and the, probably the tank is going to get a cleaning before we put the fuel back too, because we're pumping it into the jerry can here. We have one small access point to the tank that we're going to be using. I've just got that opened up. I'll show you right here you can see the tank is decently full diesel and full um and we've got this copper tube that connects to the pump that's going down in there joel i'm gonna ask your expertise on hooking it up to the electrical panel whatever you think is going to be best here okay yeah because if we're getting an air leak anywhere then i'm gonna have to make sure i tighten these clamps down okay. yeah Got some water coming up here. Every once in a while, we got little little blobs of goop coming up through, and that doesn't look like diesel to me. So you can tell that's water bubbles somehow. Okay. So these are, it's it's acting quite a bit heavier than diesel, and it looks like it's kind of gelatinized. Sometimes the water mixes with diesel, especially if you have like additives and stuff like that in there. It'll make like a weird jelly texture. That looks like water to me. We're definitely pulling a little bit of air somewhere though. Yeah, it sounds like it's coming from here to me. Blade was just uh, saying something Michael and I can both relate to. It's never on the shakedown cell when you're gonna find you have water in the fuel or the gunk. It's when you're like six hours out and there's no going back and then It's clogged with the gunk. <laughs> yeah, it's already clogged. Okay, so... Oh what, my what? god, what? <laughs> yeah, because I, I, popped it, I popped the end off here. Okay, so immediately we clogged the hose. Like gelatin, because sometimes you get like a gelatinous 
material that's formed from the additives in diesel when algae and stuff like that gets involved. It's completely full already of gunk and that was within the first 10 seconds of attempting to pump. We were, we were, having, we were having priming issues. We weren't able to pull the, pull the fuel up from the bottom. And so we, we shut off the pump and then the fuel wouldn't drain out. So I thought, okay, well, it's got a vacuum lock on the top. So I loosened the hose here and nothing came out. So we figured, oh, it's, the pipe's clogged, but it, boy, is it clogged. There it comes. That's, that's a little bit more like it. I think that that looks like diesel to me. Hey. To Look at these little chunkies floating through here. This is great. Yeah, there's some chunkies. It looks like the popcorn flying at you in the in that theater intro. You yeah. remember like what that looks like? <laughs> yep. Yeah. And there it goes into the jerry can. Like, that's like at least seventy percent water when she does that. That's oh, Whoa. that's all water. That's all water. That's all water. That's so all water. what do you do, Michael, to make that happen? So I'm just like pressing it down to the bottom, picking up some stuff and then pulling it back out towards the diesel. You can see how it clarifies the moment she picks it up yeah. off the bottom. It gets it gets clear and then that's the that's the soapy Whoa, color. Oh my. Real real thick and juicy that stuff. That's nice. Blade's got to take off. Would you like to say goodbye to our viewers? Goodbye, viewers. Yeah, I'm. You know, I I was raised on a boat, and uh, and I've, it's water and fuel. I mean, particulates and fuel. That's a big problem that everybody deals with all the time. And and I've I've uh, you know, growing up on a boat, I had lots of experience to see it firsthand on my personal boats. And then I've worked on boats here and there a little bit, and and I kind of know my way around them. You know, I've I've learned a thing or two, and and. Uh, and fuel polishing with this particular machine I've done quite a few times. So I gotta say that, that this tank, it, it, not only was it kind of strange, the anomaly that we got in there, usually I see like, you know, some thick goopy stuff, you know, the, the thick brown goopy algae stuff, you know, that's as bad as I've seen. But the, this, these hard rocks we were pulling up with this pipe is, is it's the worst I've seen. So <laughs> congratulations guys and <laughs> goodbye viewers. We were trying to drain the bowl, cleaning everything up and it just wouldn't come out. So we had to detach it from the top and it's because there is all of this sludge. It, it is, oh, it's gross feeling, but look how much it is. Just. Yo, guys, it's been a crazy day. We are now changing our old Raycor filter, which I thought looks actually pretty good. What do you guys think? Uh, regardless, we're just going to put a brand new one in and then order a few spares. I was just telling Michael how this brings back fond memories. On our way to the Bahamas, we kept getting water in the field and the engine would cut out. So I'd have to drain it all. And then I'd, I'd be down here doing exactly what I'm doing right here, filling this back up with diesel so we could start it back up. Only the boat was going back and forth, so I was only getting about half the diesel in here where the filter's at and the rest of it all over the engine and on myself. So, despite the fact that there was a brand new, barely used impeller in the engine, Joel decided... It's a new year, new bums. We're going to swap this impeller out regardless. We're going to lube it up, put new gaskets. You can't go wrong with preventative maintenance. Okay, we're just going crazy with the lube here. Uh. So Michael went ahead and lubed this up really well. Keep getting hairs in there. Got our gasket in position. Try not to get a hair in there. Stick that back on. Let's do this, let's go, let's start it up. It's been a crazy day. It looked like it was idling at really high RPMs. So I, I just revved it up just to test the throttle. Uh, got it up like 2300 RPMs and then brought it all the way down and now it's at uh, a much better idle. Our friend Bill volunteered to come out and drive us around the mooring field so we can shop for a mooring ball. So despite the fact that we won't have a dinghy and we'll be paddling for a while, I think we're still gonna go for it and get on a mooring ball. 
We found Handy Andy. He was fishing with the boys. We're following him right now. He's gonna show us. The, he has three mooring balls. I'm just gonna check these babies out and see which one we want to try to get to. Oh, so last night we were looking at mooring balls. We were checking it out. We were planning our escape from the dock. And after that exploratory mission, we kind of we had a long conversation and we had a change of heart. We decided that we would stay on the dock until we get the boat more like live aboard ready. We really want to have an outboard to get to and from the boat, mainly because of Lola. And we reminded ourselves that we're in this for the long haul. This is our life. This is our lifestyle. It's not like we need to go anywhere really soon. We have plans, of course, to cruise, but it's important to pace ourselves and to maintain a good quality of life for ourselves and Lola throughout this whole journey. When the ripcord broke and the thing just unwound all crazy, this, this piece snapped off. It's a spring. I was able to fabricate something similar out of some wire we found on the boat. It's not very pretty, but it seems to, it seems to do what that's supposed to do. So we've encountered another setback when we took the top off the outboard to replace the ripcord. We found that it's no longer pressure loaded. And um, that's something we're not sure if we can actually fix. Joel's looking into it right now. Please just stay in there, coil. Okay, so there's the coil. Uh -huh. So that thing has got to stay down in there. We do, we do not want that to come out. What we need to do is figure out what something needs to latch onto this and we need to load it back up and that that's it right here so we need to we need to get this little piece here in interlocked on this coil and then we need to load it up we got the coil loaded we just got the pull cord fed in and it looks like our little um, fabricated spring here um, is doing the trick so when I pull it you notice how it pops out and that's that's all it needs to do is it pops out like that and that's what catches on one of these edges here and spins this. All right let me catch you guys up. We've actually reinstalled the starter recoil unit for a second time because it didn't work the first time so we've got well it worked for the first four four pulls and then it went and then it didn't pull the ripcord back in we messed something up um, but now we think we've got it or we're at least gonna give it another try so in all the hubbub we forgot to mention that a friend of ours who's got his boat out here in the boatyard he watched our video and he just walked by and dropped off this brand new primer bulb so we it, it feels a lot different than the one that I Frankenstein which in theory seemed like it should have worked but I'm starting to question that. So now we got a brand new primer bulb. Let's go. Come on, baby. It's pumping. It's pumping quick. But is this little starter unit actually going to work? I'm afraid to pull it. Whoa, whoa. Well, I've never seen it happen that far. Don't get excited yet. Don't get excited yet. I made that mistake before. Not even excited yet. I have to say, it sounds a lot different. I'm almost getting excited right now, but don't get excited. Ah, that's it. That's what it does. You see, that was amazing though. That was, but again, that's why I said, don't get excited because sure enough, she was going to go. Come on, Justin, you got this. Nope, nope, nope. Oh. The primer bulb is staying full. There's, there's fuel all the way through the lines into the carburetor. So the old issue is no longer an issue. Um, but for some reason, it still just won't stay running. It just bogs down and cuts down. Keep in mind, we've completely gone through the carburetor, cleaned it up. We have a new fuel pump on. So 
We're gonna keep fighting with this outboard. Between you and me, we might be ready to take it to some local professional. If you go to Key West, you're gonna see a lot of liveaboard ready boats that are never gonna sail anywhere, but they're comfortable to live on. They got a running dinghy. They have some sort of a holding tank in a bathroom, a, a, a way to cook, but they probably can never sail anywhere, so. We got really excited because Shock Matei's engine was running good. We got the fuel polished. We actually put it in gear, forward and back, and saw the prop spinning, and everything looked good with our engine. And so we're ready to get on a mooring ball and get the show on the road. But I think we're kind of rushing it to get to the mooring ball. So we're going to have to be patient. We want to get this thing worked out before we take the next step and get out on a mooring ball. And I'm sorry, guys. We're still here at Marina Tropical. Bye. Thanks for watching guys. Thanks for being here with us. Maybe this episode was slightly anticlimactic, but that's just kind of the reality of things. And all we're trying to do is tell the truth and share what it's like out here and give you guys a taste for, yeah, life on the water. And even though we're not on a mooring ball, we are living on the water and experiencing all of the difficulties that come with that. We're so excited because Jacques Mate is sail ready. She's pretty much ready to go. She's, she's a better sailing boat than she is a living boat and the fact that we don't have an operable toilet or an operable dinghy at the moment is really putting a damper on our plans. So that's where our focus is going to be before we head out into the real deal mooring field. So we'll catch you next week and maybe by then we'll be on a ball but maybe not, you know? It's just, it's just meeting challenges as they come out here. So anyway, subscribe. Give us a like, let us know in the comments what the hell is going on with our outboard. You guys are way smarter than we are, so we appreciate everything you have to say. See you next time. These are the tales of Boab. Focus. Boab! Lola dipped. How come you're so quiet?